Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I want to show you the absolute best transition in Microsoft PowerPoint. And I know, I know, when was the last time you sat in a meeting where someone used a transition? I mean, to be fair, they do look a little amateurish and sometimes they detract from the message that you're trying to communicate. But now all of that has changed with the morph transition. With Morph, you can add some really subtle transitions that look really classy, and they actually support the message that you're trying to communicate. We'll run through a few different examples to hopefully inspire you with what's possible. All right, let's open up PowerPoint and let's use Morph. To kick things off, what is Morph and what can you even do with it? Well, right here on this slide, I have a logo for the Kevin Cookie Company. By the way, if you've never tried their cookies before, they are absolutely delicious. With Morph, I can take this slide and I'll create a duplicate. So here I could right click and I could go down to duplicate slide. Alternatively, I can press control D on my keyboard and that'll also create a duplicate of the slide. And right now I just have two identical slides right up here at the top. On this second slide, I can take this object and here I could change the size. Maybe I'll make the logo just a little bit smaller and also I'll reposition it to the top of the slide. So I'll place it right there. Now I could go over to my second slide and I'll go up to the transition tab up on top and right here I'll choose morph. Over on the left hand side I can click on preview and we can look at what morph does. So it takes the object from the first slide and it morphs into the new position and the new size on the second slide. So, so far, it looks a little bit like what you can do with animations. And here I'll go to the third slide and once again I have this same logo and I could accomplish the same exact effect using animations. To pull this off using animations, here I'll select the logo and I'll go up to the top tab titled animations. And within here I need to combine a few different animations to pull this off. Right over here I'll click on this drop down and first I'll apply a motion path. Right now it's going down and I actually want it to go up. So I'll go to effect options and let me change it to go up. And right now it's going up, but it's still the same size. Over here I could click on add animation and here's the option to grow and shrink. And by default it grows and I need to change that. So right up here I can go once again up to effect options and here I'll set it so it becomes smaller. And right over here, I'll click into the animation pane because right now both animations happen sequentially, but I want them to happen right at the same time. So I could right click on this and I'll have it start with previous. And here, if I click over on the left hand side on the play animation icon, this will now play my animation. So it gets smaller, it moves to the new position and I've effectively accomplished the same thing, but it required a lot more steps. Using Morph was a lot easier to set a new size and set a new position. So it's really your preference how you want to pull it off. You have both animations and Morph, but personally, I think Morph is a game changer, especially as you start introducing many different shapes to your slide and you want many different objects moving. Now that you understand the basics of how to use Morph, next, I want to show you some truly fancy examples that are sure to impress your audience. If you want to follow along with this, I've included a link to this deck in the description of this video. Next, let's click into slide four. On slide four, I want to create a revolving showcase of Cookie Company posters. So what that means is, well, I want to have the Kevin Cookie Company featured first. And then it's going to revolve and I'll feature the Oreo poster. And then at the end, I'll have it feature Hardee's. And then we'll reset back to the beginning. So in total, we're going to have four separate views. Over on the left hand side, I need to make sure I have four duplicates of this slide. So once again, I'll select this slide and we'll use the same shortcut key as what we used before. We'll press the control key and the D key, D as in Delta. And here I'll press it one more time, a second time and a third time. So I have four duplicates. Now that I have my four duplicates, I'm ready to go in and start modifying these different slides. When I click into the first one, this is currently good to go. I want to feature this poster first, so there are no additional changes that I need to make. Let's jump into the next slide. On the next slide, I want to feature the Oreo poster prominently. The Kevin Cookie Company will shift over to this position and then Hardee's will go underneath over to where Oreo currently is. So here I'll select this object and let me move it to the front. 
Now that it's in front, I'll take this object and let me move it to where the Kevin Cookie Company poster is, and here I'll enlarge it so it sits on just about the same level. Next, I'll select Hardy's over here and let me right click and I'll send this to the back. And I'm gonna move Hardy's all the way over to this side right here. Next, I'll take the Kevin Cookie Company poster and let me reduce the size. And here I'll click on picture format and I'll set it to the same height as the Hardy's one. And right here, I'll move it over into the left position. I now need to make similar changes to the next slide. So let's click into slide number six. On slide number six, here I'll take Hardy's, I'll right click and let me move this to the front. And this time Hardy's will be in front right here. I'll adjust the dimensions so it sits right here in the middle. Once again, Oreo is gonna move over onto the left-hand side right here, and I'll take the Kevin Cookie Company poster, let me reduce the size, and I'll position it right over here on the right-hand side. For the Kevin Cookie Company, let me right-click and I'll send this to the back. We have to make one additional change before we're ready to apply the morph transition. Let's click into slide number seven, and over here with the Oreo poster, let's right-click and let's send this to the back. Now, if you're wondering, well, why am I sending certain items to the back? If we look at slide number six, we have the Oreo poster over on the left-hand side. And onto slide number seven, it shifts over to the right-hand side. And we want it to go under all of these different objects. So we wanna make sure that it's in back. We've now configured everything properly. Next, we can select slides five through seven. Here, I'll select slide five. I'll press the shift key and select through seven. Then let's go up to transition up on the top ribbon and over here, let's select morph. Over on the left hand side, here you'll see a animation icon. So this lets us know that we've now applied an animation or a transition to this slide. Let's take a look and see how it turned out. Over here, let's select slide number four and on the bottom, we can start the slideshow from this location. All right, the moment of truth, let's test this out. Here we're on the first slide, and then look at that revolving showcase. Here we can see the second poster, we can see the third poster, and here we go right back to the beginning. So this is a really cool way that you could transition between different slides and then focus on certain elements. Back in PowerPoint, I wanna show you a few other ways that you can leverage Morph. Here, for example, I have a world map with all of the different locations of the Kevin Cookie Company. We've been expanding like crazy. Just like we've been doing all along, let's create some duplicates of this slide. Here, I'll press Control D and I'll press it again. And let's say that during my talk track, I wanna point out that we've opened some new locations in India. Here, I'll press the Control key and I'll roll my mouse wheel to zoom out. Here, I'll select this image and let me zoom in on the India location. So I'll position it right in the center of this slide. Once again, I'll select slide nine, slide 10, and let me apply a morph transition. Let's now jump back into presentation mode to see what this looks like. Here in presentation mode, I could say, hey, look at all these locations we have, but we've opened some new ones right here in India. And as I continue my talk track, we could zoom out again and see the entire world. Hopefully by now you're getting some ideas of how you can use Morph, but did you know you could also use Morph with text? Here I have three different slides where we're evaluating some different slogans for the Kevin Cookie Company. Here I'll select slide number 12 and 13, and once again, let's go up to Transitions and then click on Morph. Now, right now by default, let's jump into presentation mode to see what this looks like. Here you can see yummy in every bite. That's not a bad one, but it just fades out and the new one fades in. Instead, I wanna use more for text. Let's jump back into the presentation to see how we can apply that. Back in the main view, I have morph selected, but right now it's set so the morph only applies to objects, like say this logo. With morph selected over on the right-hand side, I can select different effect options. And here you'll see it's set to objects but I can set it to words. And when I select words, it'll keep any words that are already on the slide and it'll move it to the new position. So let's preview that again. Here it says yummy in every bite and it transitions to every bite is oh so yummy. Once again, it works the best if you're keeping some of the same words. On the next slide here, I wanna show you yet another way that you can transition words. If we go back to effect options, you could also have it apply to characters. And here you'll see that it keeps characters that appear in the new sentence. It doesn't move the words, instead it keeps the characters. Next, I wanna show you how you can have one object that's completely different from another object morph into this one. 
let's click into slide number 14 and there's a little bit of prep that we have to do before we can apply this. Let's press the Alt F10 key. When you press Alt F10, that opens up the selection pane. Another way to get there is you can click on Home, you could go over to Select, and then you could click on Selection Pane. But Alt F10 just goes a little bit quicker. We need to make sure that the shape on this slide or the object on this slide has the same name as the object on the next slide. So right up here in the selection pane, I could select this and I can change the name of this object. And to be able to pull this off, I need to include two exclamation marks in front. And here I'll type in logo. Next, I'll select the entire text here and I'll copy it. This way I can ensure that I'll paste the same thing onto the next selection pane. Here I'll select the next slide and I'll select the name here and let me paste in the same name. Now that both of these objects have the same name, I wanna apply the morph. Over here, I'll make sure that slide number 15 is selected and here I'll come up and select morph. And check that out, it'll morph from the larger logo and it'll morph it down into the smaller logo that we have. Once again, let me preview that and here you see one shape morphing into another. By now, hopefully you're getting some ideas of how you can bring your next presentation to the next level. And I wanna leave you with one final example that shows you how cool Morph is. Here I'll select slide number 16 and I have this cityscape and I wanna liven things up with a little bit of Morph. Just like we've been doing all along, once again, let's go over to the slides on the left-hand side and let's duplicate the slide. Once again, the shortcut key is Control D, D as in Delta. Now that we have a duplicate slide, let's start applying some changes. And here I'll zoom out just a little bit. And here in the second slide, why don't we take some of these clouds and here I'll just move them through the city so the clouds are moving through. And here's another cloud, we'll bring that over here. Also, I want the cars to drive through. So here I'll take the car and I'll move it all the way over here. Here I'll take the other car and we've driven down the road up to that point. And then I also want the sun to rise. So right here, I'll select the background. And next, I wanna change the gradient on this. So I'll select Shape Format. Let me click on this icon down here to bring up Format Shapes. Within Format Shape, I'll select the Paint Bucket, and right down here, I can see the current color on this shape. Let me change this just a little bit, and I'll add one more stop in here. I'll click on the color, and let me add this orange color. That's a nice sunrise color and let me bring it right to about there. So we have some nice changes now to this scene. Now we need to apply the morph. So with slide 17 selected, I'll go up to transitions and then I'll select morph. Over on the left hand side, I can preview what this looks like and everything's moving a little quick. So let me slow things down. Over on the right hand side of the morph view, over here, I can set the duration. So maybe we go with about, let's say 20 seconds for all of this and let's preview what this looks like. Here now you see the clouds moving, the cars are moving, and then you see the sun rising. So this is a really fancy example of the types of things that you can pull together using Morph. All right, well, let me know down below in the comments, is Morph your favorite transition in PowerPoint? To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. All right, see you next time.